Singapore Energy Week. Now, a key theme at this global meeting this week with energy leaders is all about energy security. Well, what does that really mean for the United States? Joining me now, Michael Levy, who's with the Council of Foreign Relations in the United States. Thanks very much for being with me here in Singapore. Now, a key thing when it comes to energy security in the United States is the Keystone XL project, $7 billion. It's a pipeline. Is this something that's strategically important to the United States? There's an enormous debate over the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, some people characterize it as an opportunity to make the United States more independent of global energy dynamics. I don't see it that way. Uh, the oil that comes through the pipeline will be priced the same way that other oil on the global market will be. Uh, the energy security argument in its favor is that it facilitates the expansion of supply in a neighboring country. That's good for the U.S. economy. Uh, but the flip side is that it also allows the development of a source of supply that's marginally worse for climate change. That's why there's such a large debate. So are you for or against this project? If I had to make a recommendation, I would say go ahead with it as long as the local impacts uh, along the pipeline route are sorted out and the protections are in place. And I don't see any reason why those uh, shouldn't be able to be put in place. Now, is this really a security question for the United States, trying to find other sources of oil away from the Middle East, which is obviously in turmoil at this time? Look, the United States imports very little oil from the Middle East, but that doesn't change the fact that it's, it's exposed the big price changes that happen whenever something uh, goes wrong in the Middle East. And importing more oil from Canada won't change that equation. Uh, so uh, it's easy to overstate the implications of importing more oil uh, from Canada. Uh, what is true is that the more we can shift the global supply mix to countries that are stable, that don't have these kinds of shocks that we find in the Middle East, the more stable the overall uh, global oil price will be. Now, the Canadian supply is relatively small in the grand scheme of things. It's not going to fundamentally change the situation, uh, but on the margin, it can help. What is fundamental then for the United States to have secure energy supply? Well, for the United States, energy security focuses primarily on oil, and the biggest lever that the United States has is on the demand side of the equation. The less oil the United States buys and the less oil the United States imports, uh, the less vulnerable it is to the economic shocks that come when the price of oil suddenly goes up. Uh, there are other steps the United States can ha do, can take to help deal with that, in particular to try and avoid some of those big jumps in price, uh, working with producing countries to make sure there's sufficient spare capacity, uh, making sure that the system develops in the direction where we use things like electric vehicles that aren't dependent on the price of oil. So there are a host of different tools. Uh, but fundamentally in the world, the United States is more a consumer than a producer, and its leverage lies on that consumption side. Final question. If you were to rate how the U.S. is handling its energy policy right now, what sort of report card would you give it? Is it doing enough? The United States is not doing enough to deal with its energy situation, not just on energy security and energy economics, but on climate change as well. There have been valiant attempts by this administration to move things forward and some successes, particularly on fuel economy standards. I think we're in a much more ambitious position than we were just a few years ago. But moving policy forward is very difficult, uh, particularly with divided government, uh, where Congress is reluctant to approve anything, not just in energy, but in any uh, area of policy. So it's tough. Uh, and it's tough to see how things change in the near future. Tough and more to do. Michael Levy, Council of Foreign Relations, thanks very much for being with me. Michael Levy there joining me in Singapore. I'm Tara Joseph. This is Reuters.